Hello, this is a brief video on how stomata open, the thing with the guard cells. I am following the EDUCAS syllabus for AS and A2 biology for that. So during the day, photosynthesis happens and can happen. I will explain what I mean by that a bit later on. For that, gas exchange is required. So you do need the carbon dioxide to enter into the photosynthesis equation um, in order to create your sugars. For that, stomata need to be open. And the how is the big question. And that's literally the learning aim for this short video. From your GCSE days, you should know that somehow water magically flows into those guard cells. They swell, become turgid, and the two flattened inside surfaces buckle outwards magically somehow. Um, the shapes become a, two crescent moon shapes and the stomata opens. But how and why? If you have a look at the cell walls, the inside surface is thicker. Imagine this to be a balloon with a bit of sellotape stuck on one side and you're inflating a balloon with that sellotape on one side. How will that balloon inflate? It will inflate on one side more than the other. It will kind of be more rigid where the sellotape is. Now, this an anatomical, so literally what the cell already has, um, it's a physical thing. You swell the outside, you keep the insides buckling into that opening up the stomata thing. Now, we still haven't explained the swelling, so that's the, the physical side of things. Right, water doesn't just randomly move in, we need to create a gradient. Uh, and the path of creating the gradient starts with, again, anatomy. There's a potassium pump already, well, a several, many, many, many potassium pumps already on the outside of uh, cell membranes of those guard cells. And these pumps, they don't work by magic, but we are for now randomly appearing a magic ATP out of nowhere, um, which means the energy is there for that potassium pump to move that potassium ion, those positively charged particles inwards. Now, they cannot just randomly cross the cell membrane. As you know from core concepts, they are charged and cannot cross the phospholipid bilayer. So you will need to have a pump um, or a channel for that. In this case, you've got a pump. Now, this is active transport. Your potassium is in the guard cell. It triggers a metabolic pathway. You've had your ameloplasts with starch being stored, which is now metabolizing it, moving it. This is an enzyme process. You have got the hydrolysis and uh, three carbon triose sugars called malate are being released. They are now soluble. So you've got the potassium, you've got the malate inside the cells, which are binding loads of water molecules. That means they're no longer free to move. You've built up the negative water potential within the cell or more negative than the outside. Hence, you are now getting the osmosis and boom, water is moving in. Your cell swells, your cell becomes turgid due to the buildup of the shell, uh, the shape of the, sorry, the, the buildup of the cell wall with a more thicker cell wall on the inside and that buckling, you are getting the stomata to open. I'm going to have to go back in time a little bit now because that ATP that pumps the potassium pump doesn't magically appear. It needs to be created. Now, it can be made in two separate ways. Either you can have the mitochondria doing their thing or their chloroplasts doing their thing. This will both be explained as part of A2 component one. So for now, if you've got a few gaps here, just leave that as, as little gaps. It will become a full picture soon. So the sun is shining, the sun is providing energy for the chloroplasts to do their thing. Their thing comes in two stages. You've got the light dependent and the light independent reactions. ATP is made in the light dependent reactions. Here's what I meant by photosynthesis can and, and will happen. So if you've got photosynthesis happen, the first part, the light dependent part, you're going to get your ATP. That is then going to be there to allow the potassium to be moved inwards. Let's ignore the mitochondria for now because respiration and that comes in at a later part. Um, what do we want? We want the stomata open so that the carbon dioxide can come in and the chloroplasts can do the second part. They can do the light independent reaction where the actual triosis and sugars are being created from carbon dioxide. Okay, now at night time, stomata close 
Now, that is for a reason. It is to prevent water loss through transpiration. You will already have covered or will shortly be covering xylem and water transport movement. So the osmotic pressure in the roots upwards. You've got in the xylem, you've got adhesion and cohesion. You've got evaporation through the stomata in the leaves, which is called transpiration. Now, at night time, if you had the stomata open, would you be able to do photosynthesis? Not really. There's no light. So chloroplasts do not get that energy. So there's really no need to have the stomata open. It would just be a water loss. However, that also means there is, with closed stomata, no gas exchange. Is that good for a plant? Um, for a short period of time, plants can obviously cope quite well with that. In evolutionary terms, plants have done pretty well with this system. Um, however, <clears throat> if this is for a very long time, you're going to get respiration to start happening, which requires oxygen, and then you're going to have a lack of oxygen. So that's a little dilemma. There's also another dilemma during very hot and very bright days. If you open the stomata to allow gas exchange, you're automatically going to lose the water. Plants have a system where irrelevant of the temperature, if there's bright light, the stomata close. Now, the consequence of that is, usually when it's light, it's automatically hot as well.